Is everybody there? Okay. All right. All right, so right now is the time when you really need to be thinking about your food as how can this help me, okay? May not be like what is the easiest and tastes the best, but trying to incorporate these foods into your diet right now, okay? It's going to be cold next week. So what is gonna happen is we're gonna do this with weather. And it is through my experience that when we do this with weather, people start to get sick. And a lot of it is just change, okay? Um, because our bodies are like, what's happening? And then some of it is that we're indoors packed with more people, and so we e more easily transmit different things. The other thing is in the cold, um, there's not as much moisture or humidity in a cold environment. And so your nasal passages tend to dry out more. And when you have dry nasal passages, there's like little tiny cracks in capillaries, which are like little blood things, and germs, bacteria, viruses can get in more easily. So. It's important to stay hydrated. That's why they tell you, one of the reasons why they tell you when you're sick to eat like soup, because that steam is helping to kind of like get into your system and moisturize everything, okay? It's also opening things up. So just be aware that we're getting into that season, okay? where, and especially right now, you know, the mask is the most important thing that we can do. Um, but we can also like bolster our bodies that if we were to come into contact with anything, then it would have a better chance of fighting it off, okay? So can someone tell me what fruits are high in? Okay, good. Okay, good, because they have so much fiber. Potassium. Potassium. All right, so what are they low in? Calories. Right. Sodium. Fat, calories, sodium, uh, or, yeah, so it's like, you can eat quite a bit. Now they do have some sugar in it, but you have fiber there to counteract that sugar. It's not like drinking a soda. Um, and they also contain antioxidants, which can combat free radicals. Um, so it's very important that, you know, as we encounter more uh, like pollution, processed foods, things like that, that we incorporate those antioxidant rich foods into our diet because those kind of like block the bad stuff. Okay. All right, so there's melons, tropical fruit. So melons are easy, watermelon, cantaloupe. Tropical fruit um, would be like pineapple, things like that. What are droops? What are some examples? Cherries. Yep. Nuts. Okay. Peaches. Okay, and then berries are easy, strawberries, blueberries. Pones. Pears, okay, apples and pears. So pones are in season right now, okay? And then citrus fruits. Citrus fruits are, are gonna be in season too. Um, citrus is in season in the winter, okay? Which is interesting because you think that winter is the time that you need the most vitamin C. Yes? Is a grapefruit a citrus fruit? Yes, okay. yes, okay. All right, so you can purchase fruit fresh, frozen. What are some other ways? Canned. Canned. Boxed, okay, so boxed or packaged, maybe like dried. Um, with canned fruit, you wanna look for a fruit that is packed in juice and not heavy syrup, okay? Like if you're making a peach cobbler and you wanna be all decadent and wanna put, some, put that in there with heavy syrup, that's one thing. Okay, but if you're just 
want like some peaches or whatever to eat, snack on, you don't want it packed in heavy syrup because that's, that's pure sugar. Okay, so the, the juice, packed in juice tastes good. Okay. So, um, I think we're, we don't need to go over the good and the bad of how to figure out if it's ripe. So if you have a question about how to tell a ripened fruit, you can Google that. Like a pineapple, you're supposed to kind of look at the bottom of it and then if you p pick out the top leaves, the middle top leaves and they come out easily, then that's a sign that it's ripe too. You can also smell it, okay? Very hard to smell things right now. Like I was trying to pick out some shampoo and I couldn't. I couldn't figure this out, okay. All right, so you are supposed to, we're going down to fresh fruit. You're always, you're supposed to wash your fruit and vegetables before you eat it. And this is because of pesticides, pests. So when, when people get a delivery of fruit, there's gonna be some rotten fruit in there. And they're, they're most likely gonna be some pests crawling around in there, okay? They're not gonna wash the fruit before they put it out on the shelves. Um, so it's important that you wash it. Now, I didn't used to do this, but since COVID, I, I'm not wiping all my groceries down. I've read a lot about that, and they said that that's really not the thing that you need to be that concerned about doing, but I am washing my fruits and vegetables that I'm gonna eat raw, and I'm kind of soaking it in like some vinegar and salt water just to get whatever off. Um, okay, so think about this. Some people think, well, I don't have to, I don't have to wash this because I'm gonna peel it or I'm gonna cut it. Well, if you take a knife and cut through the outside and it goes straight through the fruit, you've taken whatever is on the outside, pesticide, bacteria, whatever, and transferred it into the fruit. So even if you're gonna cut it or peel it or whatever, you wanna go ahead and wash it. Okay, so let's move down to vegetables. So what are two examples of flower veggies? This, I don't know what page this is, what page is this on? Broccoli and cauliflower. Good, broccoli and cauliflower. Um, what about fruit veggies? Tomatoes and cucumbers. Yeah, tomatoes and cucumbers, a lot of people um, don't know that. All right, stems. What was that? Celery. Celery. Asparagus. Asparagus. All right, leaves are easy. Lettuce, kale. All right, what about seeds? Okay, peas, corn, and then root vegetables. Carrots. Yeah. Beets, carrots, taters. Um, root vegetables are coming into uh, season right now. So are leaf vegetables and some cold weather flowers. Okay. All right, so somebody tell me some of the nutrients in veggies. Okay. All right, they have lots of fiber. Um, Okay, antioxidants, okay, oops, where am I? Okay, so you're supposed to cook vegetables until they are just tender, right? Like you don't want them mushy, okay? Um, and then the more you cook something, the more nutrients it loses, all right? So steaming, is the best way to retain nutrients. It is also the healthiest way to cook a fruit or vegetable. Grilling without a bunch of fat is also a good thing to do. Okay, um, let's see. Do, 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 do. Okay, we're gonna be done with that. All right, so let's look at, go back to your Google Classroom and, or wherever and open up your selecting and storing real quick. Selecting and storing fruits and vegetables. Okay. All right, so for canned, 
you want to look at your expiration dates. Now, can you probably eat something that's expired? Probably. However, for this class, don't. Okay? So I don't get in trouble. Um, dented, bulging cans can indicate a sign of um, like a botulism in the can. You can die from botulism. So what that is is that it was a canned veg, fruit or vegetable that somehow got an air leak and botulism grows this bacteria and so you do not want that. So make sure like if somebody gives you a can of like I made some homemade peaches here, some homemade canned peaches, and you open it, and like the top just comes off and it doesn't pop, don't eat them. <laughs> because unless you know that they just did them like yesterday, because that means that they were not sealed, okay? And so if, if it's not sealed and oxygen can get to it, it can grow bacteria. And some of that bacteria, especially botulism, is very dangerous. It's rare nowadays, botulism is. It used to be like a thing when everybody was canning stuff constantly, but um, it's still cause for concern. You just don't buy the denim bulging stuff. All right, so if something is boxed and packaged, um, you want to look for unopened containers like raisins and stuff. Okay, so frozen food. In this, you'll learn about this in Surf Safe if you take foods too. Ice crystals are an indication that the item has been thawed and refrozen. Okay? So, a lot of times you'll get like peas and they're just like clumped together. That means that at some point in the delivery system, they thawed enough to get like moist, you know, watery, and then refroze together, okay? Um, I'm not talking about like the block of spinach. You know, the block of spinach is the block of spinach. That's how it's frozen. But I'm talking like vegetables that should be individual, okay? All right, fresh fruits, just firm, heavy fruit. Look for no bruising. Avocados are probably the hardest thing because they're like not ripe, ripe overripe. They're hard to buy. Okay, let me see. All right, so storage, so you can refrigerate certain things, freeze them. Um, okay, so dried fruits and vegetables you're just going to put in the pantry. Let's see, pickles, jams, those are cans of stuff. Um, Let's see, so, so fruits that may be like refrigerated, um, think about lettuce, uh, those types of things. Now root vegetables you want to, oh, and, and berries need to be refrigerated. Um, for like root vegetables, you wanna store them in a dark, cool place. So in a drawer, under a counter, in a bag, or something like that. Let's see. And then frozen, just make sure you freeze it. Okay. All right. Um, let's see. Okay, so I'm going to go over about half of these, and then we'll take a break. And then I'll go over the rest of the half. And then i got to get you guys. Um, shoot, I forgot to get the code. i got to get the code and put that up. All right, so I'm gonna write some stuff down. You can write it down, you can type it, whatever you wanna do. If I'm talking about it, it means you're gonna be on, it's gonna be on your quiz, okay? All right, so we said you need to um, know a couple examples of stem veggies. So we said that was celery, asparagus, uh, okay. Alrighty. We said that.
that one of the best ways to cook fruits, veggies, sorry, my handwriting's not great, is to steam or grill. And that retains nutrients, okay? I should put that retains nutrients and it's healthy. question. A melon is characterized by having a thick, inedible, you can't eat it, or you're not supposed to, or it's not very good, rind, juicy flesh, and seeds. Okay, so that's a melon. Is this bothering anybody? Is it in the middle? Okay. I bet you, I bet you backwards. All right. Um, okay, so tomato squash, I'm not going to write this down. Tomato squash peppers, are they fruits or vegetables? They're veggies. They're fruit vegetables. Well, tomatoes, fruit vegetables. Okay. Okay, so four, citrus and fresh veggies, okay, you can select them by color, smell, and touch, okay. talked about steaming, grilling. They're the most nutrients. Um, gosh, this thing is strong. This must be an old one, this pen. Um, okay, so fresh fruits. sodium than processed fruit. So processed fruit would be like um, canned or dried or some sort of fruit that they've done something to. Okay. cut an onion into very small pieces. The smallest cut is called, does anybody know what the smallest cut is called? Normally do this with garlic too. It starts with an M. Mince. Okay. All right. So mince. So when you're going to mince something, it's probably going to be an onion or garlic. Okay. And it is into very small, irregular pieces, okay? So 
like a, a mince is not like a dice where you're trying to get it into uniform little tiny squares. Um, all right, it talks about sauteing. Okay, sauteing. How you do this is you brown something in a small amount of fat. So you might, a, a recipe might call for saute onions and garlic. Um, for, you know, until lightly brown, then add your chicken to the pot. So, but you don't use a lot of fat. You will use a lot of fat and submerged it. It would be like deep frying. All right, so if I have a saucepan full of peas with the juice, does anybody know what I'm going to use to remove the peas from the juice? It's a kind of spoon. Does anybody remember? Two words. Slotted spoon. Okay. Because you don't want to put a bunch of pea juice on your plate. You just want peas, right? So you got a slide spoon, a few peas, and then the, the stuff drains, the liquid. All right. And then if I am chopping or dicing, um, I could use a chef's knife, okay? And that's for chopping and dicing. All right, I'm gonna go get a Jeff's knife to show you real quick. We're going to take a break in just a second. There's a couple questions on, can I erase this right here? Did everybody get this down here? All right, I need to make a little bit of room. Okay. I'm trying to keep it all in the middle so it gets filmed. All right, so start here. This is where we left off in the box. Okay, so. If I bought, so we went blueberry picking this summer and it was like, blueberries are so volatile. We got home and the next day they were starting to go bad. It was too many blueberries for me to use. So what do you think I did with them? I put them in the freezer. Okay. So in order to save extra fruit, Okay, you can um, freeze, well package and freeze, package. Okay, so how you do this, and it's kind of a pain in the butt. Cut your vegetable or wash your vegetable if you need to. You put, get a big cookie sheet. You put it in a single layer. Put the cookie sheet in the freezer until they're frozen, then you take them out and they're individually frozen and you stick them in a bag. And then they're like, just grab what you want. Because if you stick them in a bag when they're all mushy, they're just gonna freeze together. And then it's like, how do I get these apart? So take the extra time to freeze them in a single layer. Okay, what? why do you store bananas on the counter? What does that, if you have, if you have uh, green bananas, 
why would you store them on the counter? What does storing them on the counter do? They're just sitting there. And they're green. They're yeah, they get ripened. Good. Ripened. Okay. I think we got like one more. Yes. It depends on what it is. Uh, I would say maybe like six months or so. Um, so if they start like getting like freezer burned, you'll see. They'll get like shriveled and freezer burnt. Like meat, like when you sear meat. Yeah. Is it fine to leave the meat in the freezer? They freeze it. Dear me, they leave it in the freezer for like a year sometimes. You mean with the deer meat? Is that what you're saying? Or? Yeah. No, yeah. Yeah, it's fine. All right. Um, okay. So we said potatoes, so root veggies. Potatoes, garlic, onions. You store in a cool, dark place. 